What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome back to Gibraltar United. So here we are, the two big qualifiers at the end of our Champions League group stage campaign. I think today's first game against AC Milan is probably going to be the biggest game. I think it's the best chance presented to us to pick up points in this group match, in this, or in the rest of this group stage. And if we don't, it, it'll probably be a very difficult challenge for us to get through. And of course, but saying that, it will also depend on other results and, you know, things go our way and stuff. So, Losing today might not be all doom and gloom, but it will definitely... Well, actually, losing today will definitely make things a lot harder. Being bottom of the group, you know, we we do need a win here today. But, saying that Milan are top of the group, we've never beaten Milan in three attempts. This is the fourth attempt. Pep Guardiola is in charge. Uh, probably doing a very good job there. <laughs> Although, I'm not too sure and I'm, I'm not really going to bother checking how they're doing in the league. So, with Shakhtar playing Chelsea... And Chelsea at home, you know, I think Chelsea could win that game quite easily. Or maybe at least get a draw. So we're looking to... We really, we need to pick up points here if we want any chance of going through to any knockout stage. If we win here today, we... By a goal... If we win here today and we win 1-0, we can go above Milan. You know, and, and that way, you know, we're not bottom of the group. And heck, we could even go up to second or something, if depending on other results. So... Or even first, you know, actually... No. No, we wouldn't. We could get second if we... Actually, yeah, we could go first if we win today. And Shaq to draw with Chelsea. So it, it's still possible. But like I say, I think this match is all or nothing for us. This match is the make or break for us. So, looking at the team, we're going to have to make a change very quickly to the starting lineup. We're going to uh, take Dos Santos off for Giselle. Because he's just... I think Dos Santos is a little bit too tired. I don't really want to risk it. But... Anyway, let's run through... Actually, I'm going to make another change to the bench. <laughs> I'm going to put Marcus Lopez on the bench. But yeah, let's run through this team today. So, in goal we have Cox. Right back, Armada. Centre-backs, we have Bakayoko Mati. And left-back, we have Clark coming in for the suspended Beckin Musa. Centre-midfield, we have Moens, Morella and Sadib Bey. Right attacking mid, we have Giselle. Left attacking mid, Dan Yamov. And up front, by himself, is Sonogo. The bench is Billy Jones, Amari Perez, Venucci, Nundoja, Dos Santos and Lopez. So... Come on, Gibraltar United. Let's let's beat Milan. Yeah, let's get our first ever victory against AC Milan. And let's give ourselves the best opportunity going into the last game of qualifying out of this group into the Champions League knockouts. Or at least give ourselves a chance of getting any knockout. So they've gone with their narrow formation as, would ex as was expected before the game. We are going to have you do the opposition instructions. Limo do the team talk and let's go. In front of our 2,000 fans here at Victoria Stadium. Let's do them proud. So, how are we starting the game off? A lot of the ball so far. That's all we can really say for ourselves. 15 minutes in, it's actually been a very quiet game, which does suit Milan. But it could also suit us because I do say a 1-0 victory is actually a really good chance for us to go above Milan. So... Maybe a quiet game isn't the worst thing. But it's a corner for us, first of all. And that's the first highlight of the game. It's been cleared away by AC Milan. But hopefully we'll get another chance to bring this back in. In fact, we've gone all the way back to the goalkeeper. Which I don't mind. Of course, we've retained possession on. So it's to be expected that we will look to keep the ball sometimes. Instead of look to try and bring it straight back into the attacking third. Here's Dan Yamov beating his fullback beautifully. And oh, a little bit of luck in the defence. But we're going to take it. 1-0 Gibraltar United. It's from an own goal. But you cannot take away the quality and class Dan Yamov showed on that left-hand side to beat his fullback the way he did was beautiful and the cross the, the fact that the cross was so good was what caused the own goal it was in such a dangerous area where if the defender didn't touch it Giselle's probably going to get there at the far post so he gave him that ultimatum and he decided to get the touch the defender and like I said a bit of luck it's gone to the back of the net so 1-0 and that's why we're going in at half time so decent game so far it's been quiet and the fact that it's been quiet and we're 1-0 up is very good and again I want to reiterate the point win today Chelsea are currently beating Shakhtar. We go second place in the table, which is all good for us. But ideally, I'd probably want a draw in the other game. As Sonogo gives us a 2-0 lead very early on in the second half. And that is perfect. That's a beautiful start to the second half from us. Sonogo beating, or passing actually, or trying to pass it. Doesn't exactly work out. But again, a little bit of luck from us. A little bit fortunate that the ball ended up going back to Sonogo. But he makes no mistake about that. You know, one-on-one -on -one pretty much with the keeper, even though there were a few people around him. No one was in direct, um, directly blocking him in terms of the goal. And now AC Milan have scored. You know what that means? AC Milan actually go above us in the group, shouldn't they? Oh, no, now it goes down to goal difference, sorry. So we still go above AC Milan, even with a 2-1 scoreline. So, 
not too bad still. 2-1. If the game were to stay like this and end like this, I'd be happy. And it would still mean we're second in the group going into the last game, which is just gives us a little bit more of a morale boost, I guess. Here's Sadibe with a corner. Can't find a red and white shirt, but he's going to get another chance to whip it in. I uh, couldn't find Damyamov. Third time lucky. Sonogo with the chance, and he's unable to convert it. Very good opportunity from us there. And it presented itself to probably the best player out on the pitch to do something with it, and he couldn't. So we're going to take Meti off. We're going to bring Roma Perez on. And we are also going to take off no one else for now. We're just going to make that one substitution. Uh, Morello is looking a little bit nervous. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a team talk to him. Actually, what we'll do is we'll do an overall team talk and just calmly encourage everyone. But we will just calmly tell him there's no pressure. Just that little individual team talk. Just try and calm his nerves. So the substitute's been made. Roma Perez has been introduced to the back four. Let's hope that doesn't backfire on us in any way. There's always that chance of a defensive sub that it could easily backfire and the guy you brought on costs the team a win. We're going to make another change. De Gilles clearly picked up a little bit of a knock or something. There. He obviously can run off. It's no actual orange little injury marker thing there, but we're still going to take him off. Add a fresher pair of legs. We're going to give Dos Santos the rest of the match to see if he can make an impact. And actually, as I say, I might make a tactical change. So we're going to get another highlight here, maybe. Sadibe can't pass it, and this could be an AC Milan counter-attack. Just bring him down. Just bring him down. Should have just brought him down in that situation. And now AC Milan are in a better position. Why we didn't just bring that bloke down and pick up the yellow card? AC Milan are through, and it's a brilliant save from Cox. Gets a clap for that from me. That was a good save. All right, so we are going to make some tactical changes. Actually, I, I'm going to wait for the end of this highlight. I don't want to make any tactical changes just yet. The highlight's not completely cleared. The ball's not completely cleared. And, or oh, it's trickled wide. So, yeah, we're going to make some tactical changes now. We're going to go to a more defensive mentality. We are going to much lower the tempo down a little bit more and just have waste time on and just try and kill this game off if, we, if at all possible. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to drop back into a flat five across the midfield. Still have wingers attack on. Uh, no, not wing, well, we didn't have wingers attack on last time. But we're going to go to wingers attack, something that we're a little bit more accustomed to at the team. And I think the players are a little bit more suited to do as well. So we'll just do that. And hopefully it pays off. And yeah, I say it did. You know, I would say it did indeed. Because no highlight after that one from their corner and the counter-attack. As long as we don't concede here in the final two seconds, one second, full-time whistle ref. And there we go. We've beaten AC Milan 2-1. Finally got a victory over Milan as well, which is a nice milestone to achieve. Sonogo with the man the match rating of an 8.7. Getting the eventual winner for us and putting us second place in the table. Chelsea topped the group, but the group is far from over. One point separates us and Shakhtar. Two points separate the top from the bottom. The last game is going to be a massive decider. We're going to look to go to Shakhtar and probably pick up a draw. That would be a great result. Now, uh, what was the, what, have we played Shakhtar before? I can't quite remember. I think we played Shakhtar before away from home. And on that occasion, did we draw? On that occasion, we lost. Oh, of course, it was a few years ago when... Actually, no, I'm thinking of... That's, that was not... That was a different game. So what was the situation last time we drew that we lost to them for one? Um, that was CSK Moscow. There's Shakhtar, Champions League group. We just lost 4-1 to them. So, and on that occasion last time, we won 3-1 at home. Now we've got a 2-0 victory this time at home. It's, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. You know, it's, it's going to be definitely an exciting game. Probably the closest group we've been in, involved in at all in any European competition. We've got two games until then as well, so I'll probably rotate the team up for the Cannons match. But that Shakhtar game, Shakhtar favourites, bottom of the group. I mean, I would say, going into the worst last game, I'm saying we're going to struggle. I'm saying, that, you know, our way form is always it's always been shocking, and we are going to struggle to get to a result against Shakhtar. So for us, what we need to see is Chelsea beat Milan by a margin of maybe one more goal. I think that's what we would need. With a, by a margin of more than a goal. More, one more than our goal difference, whatever, in the game that we're playing against Shakhtar. Uh, the reason I say that, you know, I might as well explain myself there. The reason I say that is because in terms of games against with us and Milan, it's exactly equal. We're dead on. Milan beat us 2-1 at home. We beat them at home 2-1. So what it does now, because we're on those level points with Milan and the games against record is equal as well, is going to goal difference. And because we have a better goal difference than Milan, we go above them. So 
on the last game of the season, if Shakhtar were to beat us, we would need Chelsea to win the game by a goal difference of more than one from us. And then that way we can at least finish third in the group. And like that, that's the worst case scenario because I do think the last game is going to be very difficult. But still, we hopefully knock out football would, would be a great thing for the club. You know, it's still a really good accomplishment. But anyway, me guys back in a second for that Shakhtar game where hopefully we won't have to rely on Chelsea. We can just do it ourselves. All right, guys. So welcome to the last game. Let's get into this. So at the Dom's Bass Arena, Dom Bass Arena, 48,966 people here. Big, big decider. I already went through what's on the line, you know, what's at stake, what we were looking for previously or a second ago, really. So I'm just going to go into the starting lineup and talk about who I've selected today. So a few changes. Uh, Pablo dos Santos is back fully fit. However, I've decided against selecting him. In this game, I feel that Giselle would offer us maybe a little bit more in that attacking midfield role. I'm going to give him another chance on that out on the wing. I think that's what we may want to explore playing people like uh, Marcos Lopez, although... Not Marcus Lopez, but playing people like Sonogo or Giselle out on that right-hand side. And then maybe putting someone like Lopez or Giselle, maybe, if Sonogo was on the right-hand side, up front. That may be something that works for us, or maybe something I want to explore in the future. But, elsewhere, the, the team today is the same back four. The, oh, not the same back four, sorry. Muster returning to the starting lineup with Jesse Clark dropping to the bench. Elsewhere, though, the same midfield, um, the same front three, pretty much. And like I say, everything else is the same. Just... That one change, which is Clark coming in and Dos Santos being dropped completely out of the squad. The bench is slightly different as well. I think I've gone with more attacking sort of mentality on the bench. Uh, uh, Buru, Buru, uh, El Habib, <laughs> uh, he uh, he was on the bench previously. He wasn't on the bench at all. I think it was our bench last game was Ndodja and Venucci, I believe. And I think that's a little bit too negative, a little bit too... Uh, one-minded, you know, that's two sort of defensive-minded mid midfielders out there. And I don't think that's necessarily what we need. Plus, you know, El Habib can play on the wing. And I've just noticed that Bonnet is actually fit. So I'm actually going to put Bonnet on the bench and actually have Marcos Lopez there. But it's probably not match fit, but he's got his conditions high enough for me to probably say it. at the end, if we wanted to really go for it, if Dan Yamov wasn't having a good game, we could probably throw him on for 20 minutes. So they reckon... We're a good side and we can, you know, this is someone from, I'm guessing, the Shakhtar. I mean, Yuri Sepiano, Sepian, <laughs> Sepania, whatever that guy's name is, Yuri. Uh, he actually says that we could win today. So let's let's hope we can actually perform as well as others are saying that we do. What was the actual, uh, what was the odds? Yeah, we're four to one on there. That's not exactly great. But let's go. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Chibori United versus Shakhtar, fourth time we've ever played these lot. And starting off aggressively, but giving away a free kick. I mean, it's a bit of a foolish free kick to give away. I mean, we might as well just let the ball roll out. Anyway, first proper highlight of the game. And it's starting from a Shakhtar goal kick. And it could be then building up play in a rainy day here in Ukraine. And it's gone through, and it's a very, very easy goal for Shakhtar. Musta being beaten way too easily. You know, he's been, pause this, the, you know, the right back's kind of out of position, I guess. So the centre backs have sort of moved over, although I don't necessarily think that was a necessity. With the both centre backs moving over, it meant Muster decided to come in and marked um, Dominguez, whatever that guy's name was, instead of necessarily watching out for the run from the wing from Junior. And as a result, Muster did try and go out to cover it and probably could have thrown an interception in. Junior's able to run through. And Cox, again, probably could have done more. But I guess at the, the range, you know, the, the distance between him and the player made it near impossible for him to save it anyway. So with Milan winning as well against Chelsea, it would put us bottom of the group. So we do need to come back right now. Muster playing it in the box. Sidibe was in the shooting position. I'm, despised it. I'm surprised he didn't go with the shot. I've not told him not to shoot long. And in fact, here's Giselle. Bang! Back in the game. Miro Giselle with his eighth goal of the season. Putting us back on level terms. And that would put us up in the third place in the league, in the table. Which is okay by me. Um, one thing I should mention as well, actually. I played two games in between this one. And the first game, I think I won 11-0. Sonogo scored five goals in the first half. In fact, five goals in a very, very short amount of time. He scored six come the end of the game. Like I said, he won 11-0 in the league. And then in a cup pre re recently, I played the second team. And they won like 5-0, I think, or something like that. Was it 3-0 or 5-0? I can't remember. I think it was a good goal margin anyway. So, doing well domestically. And here's Damyamov with an incredible chance. Damyamov has given us the lead and potentially could put us through to the Champions League knockout. And now, if we get one more goal... We could top the group. Come on, Gibraltar. Let's do this. Let's get out there. Come on. 
<laughs> I'm suddenly pumped from 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Can we hold on? Are we going to grow on this lead? Like I said, one more goal when it's top of the group. That's that's still something worth um, throwing yourself forward for. As Shakhtar Donetsk on the attack in the penalty area. A little bit of space. Now, shoot. Instead, it's a good tackle from Meti. We're able to clear it. We're able to maybe create a counter-attack here. Sonogo finding Moens. But Moens giving the ball away. And now it is Shakhtar who looked pretty dangerous. We were flooding people forward. And now his junior in a good position. Cox with two brilliant saves. And we keep ourselves in the game. Brilliant by Cox in goal there. Wow. Two, I, you know, I questioned whether he could have done more in the first goal. And he, he probably could have by the example he set there. And we're back to 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> the good saves end up amounting to nothing. As seconds later, they get another chance. Bit of poor defending. I mean, we're all over the place here. But why... Has he been given a few yards of space in our box? You know, no one's around him. I think that's poor defending there by the centre-backs. It's Mati, who they've pinned that blame on. He is on the right hand. Oh, he's actually on the left-hand side. I would have thought that would be more back of Yoko's fault. Uh, but 2-2. Two -two, still games wide open. And it's still very possible for us to, get, us to get through to the Champions League knockout. So, I'm going to calmly tell the lads. You can still come out with a win tonight. I think... That's what I want to be telling the lads. It's been a good performance, yes, but I want to make sure they know that they can still win this game today. And I still have faith in them. Here is Sonogo, picking the ball up out wide and running inside with it. Moens to Damjanov. Damjanov play it, crack across the face of goal. He decides to go for the shot at a near impossible angle. Very nearly scored, but that's a cra cracking opportunity for the team. And should just be looking to... Whip it back in the face, whip it across the face of goal. And now Shakhtar have given themselves the lead, and that puts us bottom of the group. Now we're back in the situation we were in the first half where we need a goal to get ourselves through to a knockout stage of any European competition. And Sonogo picking up a knock, that's not good. It puts even more pressure or even more significance on Damianov's miss in the second half. As fuck! Gotta go attacking now. We've got to go for this. We need two goals to save ourselves or give ourselves a chance of getting European football past Christmas. Here's Sonogo with a brilliant opportunity. 1-1 one -one with the keeper. Can't score. Ah. <sighs> Dan Yamov unable to get the ball on that left-hand side. Or do anything with it. Shakhtar currently controlling the play. Here's Musta to Sadiq Bay. Maybe we can create an attack here. Nope. Sonogo's pass is a poor one, to say the least. That's dumb. I'm done with all that passing nonsense. Seeing them pass it around. Right, we're going to make a change. We're going to bring you on in the centre of the park. Uh, Sonogo's not having a good game. We're going to bring Marcos Lopez on. And we'll see what them two changes do. As Shakhtar could be about to score another one here. Rattled the crossbar. The rebound's not cleared. And there we go. It is another goal. Shakhtar 5. Gibraltar United 2. That is definitely us out of the Champions League and out of Europe this season. It's been a poor camp. Well, it's been a close campaign. been a tight campaign. But we should have done better on we once we were at 2-1 and even 2-2. And I think now I've gone attacking. I, I think that probably ruined our chances. But yeah, well, I say chances were slim anyway. Going attacking was the right choice. And it's it's 6-2 now. And it's it's getting embarrassing. Shocking defensively from us in this game. And we only have ourselves to blame. Eight click opportunities we've allowed them to get. Eight. That's just piss poor. That is just poor. And it will be another, I think, reassessment of the tactic. I've already got another tactic in mind that I want to play. It's a 4-2-3-1 variation. But the problem with that is I think I need to find a really good defensive midfielder to play that position. I've actually found a really good attacking midfielder that I think could play that formation really well. Although it would cost me quite a bit of money. I think, it, I think I, I previously made a bid for this guy. It's going to cost me around 5 million with probably 2 million, 3 million up front and the rest installments. So, you know, that's something I can think about. But being knocked out of the competition here isn't going to benefit us, isn't going to bring us in a lot of funds, really. 
And like I said, I still need a defensive midfielder if I want to change to that formation because the formation I want to play does have defensive midfielders. So, or at least one. So I'm going to need at least one very good defensive midfielder. I think we need one very good attacking midfielder. I mean, I don't mind playing, for example, Giselle on the wing, although in this game he's played decently, but not great. In fact, here's Armada wasting an opportunity for us. And I think maybe that's something I need to... Like I said, I think the defensive midfielder is something I need to explore in Europe. I think... We need maybe a bit more support up front for Sonogo. I don't think he can do it by himself. I don't know. Uh, it's just so frustrating to lose. It's still the, it's the away form that is just killing us in Europe. Year in, year out. We just cannot get enough points. Or get put in good enough performances there. And like I said, at the bottom, they said the manager's team talk at halftime clearly worked. And it did. It backfired on us or it didn't work for us. And Shakhtar's halftime team talk clearly with working, you know, don't be harsh on the players. Fuck, don't be harsh on the players. 6-3, six, 6-2 six, is embarrassing, no matter how big of a team, how small of a team you are. 6-3 is fucking pathetic. Don't be too harsh on them. <laughs> so, next time I'll meet you back, well, I don't really see... I might just meet you back at the end of the season. I don't really fancy meeting you back halfway through the year or whatever, I don't think there's going to be too many important things. I mean, transfer-wise, we could sign a few people, but like I said, I don't really think it's going to happen. Uh, in fact, I've already built the tactic I kind of want to be using next year. Um, no, I haven't built the tactic. But basically, the tactic I sort of want to be playing next year, I guess I will use... Um, I'll use this formation to sort of show you. It's basically this. It's a it's a four two three one. But it's like this, instead of just your flat, maybe two across here, or one across here, of course, that guy in the center would be in the middle. So basically, instead of two here, or two in the defense midfield, I'm gonna ha I want to have sort of this. But currently, the, what the squad's limitations are, are the, are the is the defense midfield position. Just I, I'd say, actually, it's only the defense midfield position. Because if I looked at my center mids, you know, we can play Sadibe there, we could play Morella there, we could play Moens there. If I looked at my attacking mids, you could play Sadibe there. So, we probably don't even need an attacking mid. It's just I need a very solid defensive mid if I want to play that formation. So, that's probably what I'm going to be looking for over the course of this season. I mean, nothing, like I say, nothing really great for us. We've got 30 million in the balance. I actually didn't realize we had 30 million. Like, it's, been a, it's been a while since I've been on this save. I want to reiterate that point. I'm really going to start trying getting back into this now. And I didn't realize we had 30 million. I was thinking 5 million would take a huge chunk out of our transfer budget. But... I don't think that's going to be too bad. Now, this is the guy I was sort of looking at, Erwin Ham Hamer Hamerly. I think this guy looks very, very tasty. 18 years of age. Probably not the right word there, tasty. But very good. 18 years of age. I think he could be an incredible attacking midfielder, which would then allow Sadibe to play in the centre of midfield for us. I think this, you know, I think this guy would be an ideal capture for the team. I think he'd help propel our team and also be a part of our team as we look to push into the next part of our European sort of campaign or next part of being a, a European team, trying to get consistent knockout football, trying to be that team that's constantly in the top two of a group stage. And like I say, he's going to cost me around 5 million, but I think the club can afford it. And I think we might, I might be looking to sell a few people during the winter. Um, made during, during the, yeah, this winter transfer window we've got coming up. Although, I'm not too sure. Like I say, like, it'll depend on what I can see out there. But I do want to sign some more people. I think the goalkeeping position is still one this club needs to improve upon. Uh, I think the winging, the winger position could definitely be improved upon. I mean, Bonnet's going to be coming back for the rest of this season and hopefully be given, get, be given games to develop. But we do sort of need someone of Dan Yamov's ability. And that's not even a great ability, but we could use someone of this ability in the team. Uh, we could use two great wingers, two great inside forwards. I do like inside forwards and I do want to be playing them. So, like I said, I think we've got a lot of, hopefully a lot of stuff to be doing over the transfer window. It's about finding the players and I probably will be looking to splash the cash. A bit like I did this season. I believe this season I spent money. I think I spent like 3 million, didn't I? 2 million. Actually, yeah, I just spent 3 million. I signed Bonnet for 1.3 million and Vanucci. I think Vanucci was a massive waste of money. I'll probably be giving him the rest of this season to try and develop and stuff. But I don't think Vanucci's going to be great. And I think that'll probably be one of my worst signings I'll ever make here. <laughs> I don't think I'll be making that mistake again. But yeah, this will be it for now, guys. Massive disappointment from the team. Not to be going through to, the champ to any knockout stage of competition. But in what has been the tightest group stage we've ever been involved in, I guess we can't be too disappointed to say that we only lost three times and all three of them were away from home. And heck, if we'd have drawn to Milan, if we'd have beaten Chelsea in that home game, 
you know we'd be looking at it we'd be looking in a different situation right now but we just have to improve next year so until next time guys peace out